India as a country, we can think of so many things. All these global surveys happening around us. We've seen people mentioning the Indian culture, the Indian food, and so many things we don't even expect them to mention. But when it comes to profound personalities, like famous Indian personality, there's always this one person who's mentioned by most of the people. Gandhi, Gandhiji, Mahatma Gandhi, or as we call him, the father of our nation. We celebrate his birthday on 2nd October as International Non-Violence Day. So like, the right. reason for my research was why? Why do people still remember him? What is the relevance of Gandhi in today's world? Like, if people find him relevant in today's world, if the ideology like Gandhianism is still the mantra to solve problems in modern context. So I'm an Anya of class 12D mm -hmm. and today I have with me a very dear, like, friend of mine, Mr. Ritesh. I mean, if you're comfortable with me addressing you like that. Absolutely. Please, yes. please continue. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to ask for your consent for this video being recorded for study purposes. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. So, I mean, I don't know you on a personal note. I don't yes. really, we are not, not really before this meeting. Yeah, but yeah. Buchan Didi, who like recommended me, like, recommended you to me, she was she was like she was saying that you are going to be the like going to be the person i was looking for this entire research like you are going to be the person who's going to give me like such views that oh, my whole research will be complete the whole analyzing and report everything will be like to the point so i'm very grateful yeah, that spent, you made uh, yeah yeah thank you thank you i am also happy that we i got a chance to talk about uh, gandhi ji who I call Bapu in my personal conversations. Oh. Um, yeah, because uh, I have felt that uh, connection. I mean, earlier it was more of a like respect and regard from him, but with time that developed into a personal connection. So I, you know, I started referring to him as Bapu uh, that, in my conversation. That's very yeah. interesting to know. Like not a lot people even call him gandhi like i even called him gandhi not even adding that g that we are always taught to but like it's right. interesting to know that you address him as babu so when you think about gandhi what are the first three words or three things that come to your mind yeah uh, you know one of his uh, biggest qualities uh, that uh, that even his opponents would agree uh, on is courage or sacrifice and uh, both are you know uh, different words for the same human quality um, the other one which uh, most of his opponents or almost all of his opponents would agree barring a few uh, maybe like churchill or some others mm -hmm. uh, would be sincerity and uh, the third one which i feel he possessed a lot of is empathy so okay. these three things, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I mean, yeah, go on, please. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to add that, you know, uh, if you uh, if you say that these, uh, that, I mean, you the question you asked was that, tell me the first three words. Uh, you know, if I only give uh, five to 10 seconds, this these may not be the first words that come to my mind because he used to refer to, Truth and non-violence, satya and ahimsa, and so on. Uh, but uh, you know, I I gave myself that freedom to think about this for a couple of minutes and then come up with words which are more meaningful to me rather than which just came out of the top of my head. So that's that's interesting. That's wonderful to know. I mean, you're giving. Yeah, I'm looking at you. I know that you're giving a lot of respect to Gandhi, and you hold a lot like like hold a lot of respect for him and a lot of regard. So, I mean, right. you're talking about Gandhi as a person, you're talking about his sincerity and empathy. So if we, True. for a moment, like think of it, like we separate both of them, Gandhianism and Gandhiji. If you want to separate right. both of them, I mean. So Gandhi as a person yeah. and Gandhianism as a philosophy or an, or an ideology, how do you perceive both of them? Yeah. Uh, the way I have uh, read and understood Gandhi, uh, or Papu as I call him, uh, he, um, you know, one thing which can be said of, as as I all uh, as I mentioned in the answer to the previous question that uh, he was a unique personality.
for whom even opponents would agree with his qualities. So one other thing which opponents would also agree is that, uh, uh, you know, he, he used to also say this himself, that his life is his message. So uh, he used to, you know, live what he believed in. So for example, uh, for example, we think that uh, uh, that simple living is good, or maybe we may read something about environment and we may think that we should reduce our wants and needs and so on. And then um, we, we, you know, hold those ideas, but we only are able to implement a very few of them in our own lives. But, you know, Bapu was very different from this. So Bapu, you know, in, in South Africa, uh, he got this uh, one book called Unto This Last from, uh, of, uh, uh, um, John Ruskin, and uh, he was going from, uh, you know, uh, he was he moved between uh, two states uh, called uh, Transvaal and uh, one other state. Uh, so uh, he was going from one of these places to the other, and uh, this book was given on the, at the station to him by some one of his friends, and uh, he read that book overnight, and. Uh, he was influenced so much by it that, uh, you know, in the morning he decided that he would leave the city, he would leave his practice, his uh, barristry, he would uh, shift to a farm. Uh, you know, this book is actually uh, about these ideas about simple living and the value of labor and uh, how um, economic equality, uh, I mean, uh, the the economic value of labor mm -hmm. should be equal. Yeah. Uh, so doctors should get equal pay and uh, uh, doctors should get as much pay as a manual laborer, etc. So, you know, we, I have read that book and uh, whatever we read, you know, we do not implement that in our life. But if by morning he had decided to do this and then he started in the in the next day when he reached the other place he, he read that overnight he was so influenced by it and um, when he reached the new place he wrote to all his friends that i'm stopping this uh, city life and whoever wants to join me can join me and most of his friends could not because they could not leave their families and they could not move their families everywhere uh, to, to a village and uh, adopt a life of manual labor so only a few friends joined him like herman kallenbach and a few others and even then he was so convinced that he moved ahead so um, you know i i adopted this uh, elaborate route to get to the answer but what i meant to say is that uh, gandhi and gandhianism and gandhi gandhianism is not uh, two different things so gandhi whatever he built, you know that uh, Obviously, that kept on changing as his as he got new knowledge and as he got new beliefs. But at any point, what Gandhi was, we can say that Gandhianism was the same thing. So uh, th they were not different. That's so, so, wonderfully put. I mean, you're drawing a lot of anal analogies and you're talking about how we are not the same as Gandhi. We we cannot you know compare to him. So do you think this makes Very Gandhi true. evergreen? Do you think Gandhi is evergreen in any sense? Uh, yes, I do believe uh, that uh, his ideas and his, at least the, the as, as we call in Sanskrit, the sat, sat of his ideas or the, the mool or the, or the fundamentals of his ideas um, were uh, timeless, were beyond. I mean, what uh, the, the, the ideas which he presented that even the, every human being, uh, even the opponents, uh, have their own reasons to do uh, the things that they do. And uh, we should uh, not judge them and we should be kind to them. And even if they are wrong, uh, the only emotion that we feel should be uh, maybe uh, sympathy for them, that they are not able to see the right thing uh, rather than feeling uh, hatred or, uh, or anger. So I think that these ideas, uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, if, if he had proposed some ideas about uh, some facts about nature, I mean, with new knowledge, they may have got replaced with the newer facts uh, like scientists do. But because his ideas were about the 
the existence of human being and uh, the important values of human beings and how human society can uh, you know sustain uh, so I, i i do feel that most of those at least the fundamental part of those ideas will always be valid as long as human society remains so you talk you talked about south africa i mean this is an extremely nice way to put it like how gandhi just is just not all about the freedom struggle or nationalist movement he's much more than that absolutely absolutely actually uh, you know the freedom struggle was incidental to gandhi i mean uh, gandhi ji today uh, would have uh, you know tried to uh, live up live to his ideals um, he may not have been as successful because there uh, the independence struggle was uh, backdrop would not have been there but uh, the in, the independence struggle was only a, a small part of uh, the the search for truths that gandhi ji was engaged in or the um, you know he called it the search for truths but you know i yeah. i uh, call it the way you know his uh, effort to understand uh life and existence uh because it was it was it was even more than uh search for truth because mm. uh you know his experiments in medicine his experiments in agriculture his experiments in education um mm. uh, you know after this uh, the non cooperation movement uh, he called off the non cooperation movement in february mm-hmm. 1922 after the chauri chaura incident and uh, on i believe the incident was on 5th february and he called it off one week later on 12th february and after that you know he became involved in the next uh, next time he became involved in politics was around 1929 when the pune swaraj uh, resolution was passed in uh, by congress uh, so between these years you know he went uh, to jail for two years maybe till 1924 mm-hmm. and after that he was released early but he uh, started something called a constructive program so mm-hmm. what he said was that you know freedom uh, is a goal but uh, more than that uh, our society suffers from many more ills uh, mm-hmm. like uh, you know uh, untouchability and uh, other other issues so uh, if if his interest you know in 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 this way also he was uh, so much different from most other political or almost all other political leaders because um you know even while doing good uh, other political leaders you know enjoy the limelight and the fame that comes with it mm-hmm. that comes with of it course. so they cannot voluntarily rejected so but when gandhi ji came out of jail in 24 you know people went to meet him nehru patel and many others that uh, okay now what is the next we should start mm-hmm. and he said i am not going to start anything human uh, hindu society suffers from so many ills i am going to work on that so this voluntary rejection of uh, uh, limelight and fame and attention is also another thing which differentiates him so uh, that is why i said that this independence struggle was only incidental to his ideas and philosophy and life absolutely. and he went much beyond that yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so you know you talking about how it was incidental to his life and you talking about so many ideas about of gandhi like apart from truth and sacrifice and everything he didn't enjoy, he like sacrifice those limelight that all the other people enjoy do you think this Very makes true. him a leader like and or a global leader in any sense uh, yes uh, because because this is uh, so rare uh, uh, rarely seen uh, among uh, even the you know even the most famous leaders which are there like even i mean you can take any of the, uh, them like uh, you know in britain uh, no uh, but churchill is very famous or in in usa lincoln is very famous or washington is very famous but uh, you know these people were great uh, um great people uh, drivers or people inspirers uh, but they were not uh, completely free of the faults of humanity i am not not saying that even bapu was completely absolutely free of that but bapu at least was honest that he was full of these flaws water and every day he made that attempt to conquer those flaws and go beyond it so uh, you know i do believe that if uh, you know there is no objective way to measure 
that who is the greatest of them all. Mm. But I believe that if there was some way, I believe that Gandhi ji would rank right there at the top or maybe top two, three people. Yeah. You're, you're giving me a lot of incentive, you know, to rethink my whole idea about Gandhi because all the things you've tell, you're telling me, they're most of the things I didn't know myself. I didn't know that Gandhi was like that. So, because my knowledge is restricted to what I've been reading all throughout my syllabus. Yeah, right. So, but I have reached out to other yeah. books too. But this was... Yeah, the, like, the one, one thing that I would recommend for this, you know... Uh, is that, uh, you know, re, uh, instead of knowing about Gandhi by reading others' writings about him, yep. uh, it is much, much better to read uh, Bapu himself. Uh, he has written about five lakh pages of, uh, uh, you know, writings throughout his life. And mm -hmm. all of them are uh, available free online um, in complete works of Mahatma Gandhi. It is mm -hmm. public information made by government of India. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his life, since he, he led such a public life uh, and um, he he insisted on communicating every private detail publicly. So even when he and Kasturba had a fight or, mm -hmm. or even when, um, you know, uh, at the age of 67, you know, he had a, a dream which was, uh, you know, in which he... Uh, uh, he felt, uh, you know, uh, sexually aroused, and he he published everything, uh, you know, next day, and uh, you know, he he. I mean, his endeavor was that uh, uh, there should be no portion of his life which is private. So the insights that we get by reading him directly, uh, I, I have never felt that others are able to do the similar level of justice, and he was a. Uh, you know, voracious writer, and the uh, and he he also had a, an excellent uh, way of communicating. So, uh, you know, it when you read Bapu, you feel as if uh, he is speaking to you. So, uh, like most a lot of people, not most people, but one way of writing which a lot of people choose is that uh, you know they will only communicate the well formed ideas. You know, the final thoughts that they have, and but Bapu used to communicate the debates which are going on in within his mind mm -hmm. so by reading him directly you can accompany him on this journey that he had undertaken to achieve uh, you know to to understand existence and life human life yeah so great i mean you're stressing on the point that you should read about gandhi from his works only yeah yeah not about but yeah yeah you should read gandhi i, I yeah, yeah really I mean, you should that. read Gandhi, yeah, in that sense. And yeah, so, right, right. Yeah, so do you think this creates any kind of relevance that Gandhi might share with modern world, like modern context? Is As I started with the question, is Gandhianism a way to solve problems in modern context? Yeah, uh, yes, I feel that, uh, you know, the, the struggles that uh, uh, he uh, went through and he conquered, uh, are the same struggles which we face at an individual level every day. So uh, the, the primary uh, problems of human being is, uh, you know, as, as even the Gita says, or even the Upanishads say that, or, or even, even Buddha used to say that uh, it, is, it is desire and the suffering caused by that desire. And, you know, all the worldly problems can be traced to these roots that uh, we are not able to uh, you know some philosopher i do not remember his name but uh, i i believe either it was uh, mark twain or uh, some some philosopher mm -hmm. he he said that most of human problems are caused by yeah or something like that almost all of human problems are caused by not being able to sit quietly in a room so something like that so uh you you know, like crime, like corruption, like uh, environmental degradation, like inequality, and all these problems which we consider uh, are all, all of those can be traced to desires. And uh, Gandhiji uh, was able to, you know, most of mostly conquer all his desires and, you know, um, and, and, and we, uh, in his life, we can see that struggle uh, yeah. from earlier when 
he attached he was attached to goals and he used to get disappointed in south africa on not achieving them and later when he uh, moved when he conquered these feelings and uh, he could he could only focus in the later part of his life his only focus was dharma mm-hmm. you know right right action i mm-hmm. should do right action and let everything take care of itself mm-hmm. so i believe that uh, this will remain always relevant as long as human society exists so i i do feel that you know it is a great education in uh, uh, philosophy mental well being sociology you know in in personal uh, uh, you know uh, it is also great education in uh, understanding the state of uh, the the human state of existence i mean yeah. why does humanity exist and how how should uh, human societies deal with uh, uh, problems like yeah. uh, i mean the the so- social problems caused due to individual flaws like desires and ambition and so on. so i i do feel that uh, he will uh, always remain relevant yeah so i mean it that's rather like you know engrossing because you want to know more about gandhi from your answers but i can feel like anyone who listens to the l- listens to this video i mean they would want to know these things that gandhi shared with us because in Absolutely. the beginning i've heard you mention that the connection there is a connection with gandhi so like do you feel that there is like do you feel the connection with gandhi do you think that you share something with him even though you're not born in an era where gandhi is present absolutely 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 as i said that you know these um these problems you know all of us uh, these problems are common to all of us that uh, you know we have uh, a lot of uh, things available to us and yet we feel uh, dissatisfied so this takes many forms you know we feel slighted by other individuals in our life mm-hmm. and uh, we also feel slighted by the circumstances that we are in and we feel uh, you know w- how i mean we we want to reach reach a state of uh, more or better from the current state we are in so uh, that that trouble is always there in our mind so that is the, uh, for me you know gandhi ji's uh, political ideas uh, and gandhi ji's uh, impact on the indian independence struggle is a smaller aspect of why i respect him and appreciate him he is venerable to me more as a as a as a person who shows me the ideal way to live a human life and uh, that is the reason i feel uh, deeply connected to him and that is the way i use him in my daily life you know his writings uh, when i feel low when i feel depressed i visit his writings and i spend some time reading them and then i i get uh, some light or or some way to look at these things so uh, i mean uh, uh, and 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 his writings you know uh, through very uh, practical ways for example he had taken a case of parsi rustum ji and mm. uh, he, who was a friend of gandhi in south africa and uh, he had uh, you know smuggled some items without giving customs to the south african government and that was caught and he was facing a, a huge fine plus jail sentence and gandhi ji had taken up that case and um, you know people will say that there are these ideals that gandhi ji has but they are not relevant practically but mm. you know he showed their relevance in mm. practical cases for for example in this case the conviction was clear and he was caught red handed and mm. there was no way he could be saved but parsi rustam ji went to gandhi ji and he said you please take my case and he said you know my ways i will i will start with a full and complete confession and you know parsi rustam ji was caught in that shipment but he was doing that smuggling for the last 2 to 3 years i don't remember the exact time but he was doing for considerable number of years and gandhi ji's confession statement which he drafted for parsi rustam ji he exposed all the previous um uh, smugglings as well and he mm-hmm. said that i have been doing that my client has been doing this smuggling since this much and he promises to not do it in future etc so uh you know the 
um, the the officer you know uh, was impressed by the honesty and um, he uh, he he find parasi rustam ji and he had to pay all the uh, customs which he had smuggled uh, all the customs which he had not paid plus mm-hmm. some extra amount but he could avoid the jail sentence and uh, you know uh, i also want to add that when gandhi ji you know tried these things mm. um you know when when uh, parasi rustam ji came to him and he said that uh, what if he imprisons me then what gandhi ji said you know of course gandhi ji was not sure that he will not imprison him but gandhi ji said that the act of smuggling mm-hmm. was the shameful part was the part which you should regret was the part which should give you pain not going to jail you should think of going to jail as a way of cleansing yourself so this idea you know it is it is completely at a different level you know move i mean in this particular case the result was that parasi rustam ji was let off lightly but according to gandhi ji even if he is not let off lightly then also mm-hmm. the right or the better way is to accept it and mm-hmm. that would lead to a better state of mental well being as well as social as a bit as a more healthier society so what he, he did not claim that if you accept truth every time you will yeah. your path will be easy mm-hmm. it may be it is more difficult or harder but mm-hmm. uh, in the end it will be it will lead to a better individual and a better society that is what he claimed so yeah, beautifully put i mean beautifully put seriously this is with all <laughs> genuineness in my heart that you have explained it with an analogy you have explained it with a case study and you've given like incentive to all those people watching that they can research or they can explore more things so like ending on a note that do you think the conflicts we face now because you mentioned smuggling which is also a thing yeah. that happens in today's world do you think the conflicts yes. we face now are similar to the conflicts we faced at that time do you think the ideals like sacrifice and all like they mean the same they mean the same uh yes uh, uh you know the reason uh, behind most of the conflicts uh you if if you study uh any conflict the reason behind uh, i believe i can say that every conflict mm-hmm. the uh, if we study deeply we will find that it is um the different uh, differences between individuals their different mm-hmm. desires Hmm. and their different goals as well as their different way of looking at the world mm-hmm. so gandhi ji's tool which he gave us that mm-hmm. with deep sincerity and empathy you know he used this word satya and ahimsa but it was it was uh, it is not you know ahimsa normally or non violence normally means you know absence of violence but in mm-hmm. gandhi ji's case you know i have felt that it is a much better to translate it as empathy you know it is it is a way of going into another's mind another shoes and not feeling even an iota of hatred for them understanding the things from his or her perspective that and when we do that you know we are able to uh, do justice to him and we are able to present our perspective to him much better so the, those tools which he gave even, even satya which he said you know is uh, more than truth you know i believe a better translation is sincerity that uh, yeah, a, a, a hindi poet named mathri sharan gupt had written this about him that uh, which i believe describes his ideal of truth very well he had written that jo tere nirmal man me tha wahi hmm. buddhi mein vaani mein hmm. aur buddhi aur vaani mein tha jo wahi kriya kalyani mein means whatever was in his mind Uh, mm-hmm. whatever was in his mind is also was also in his intellect mm-hmm. and in his voice and whatever was in his voice was also in his actions mm-hmm. so his his truth was uh, more about sincerity and his non violence was uh, more closely related to empathy for the other so uh, with these two ideals if we proce- proceed on, on solving any issue in today's world i believe that we will get much more success because you know most people are reasonable you know very 
rarely we will find people who you know deliberately sabotage others or want to deliberately mm-hmm. give pain to others and are sadist and enjoy in giving pain etc you know maybe we can exclude a few you know say uh, you know people with mental defects like serial killers and all but most people are reasonable and genuine so i think for, in all those people if we approach the problem with satya and ahimsa which mm-hmm. in my words is sincerity and empathy Mm-hmm. then i think that uh, we will be able to solve most of the conflicts even in today's world yeah i mean teach me about gandhi sir you you have like i could see you are an avid reader about like you've read a lot about gandhi so thank you yes. so much yes. that was like a pleasure for me to interview you i mean i thought that i was listening to someone teaching me about gandhi more than just interviewing someone so i mean yeah thank you thank you for have, uh, you know talking to me because since i spent so much time reading about him it is always a pleasure to talk to others about him particularly if i may say to young people younger than me you know people yeah. older than me i also talk to them about bapu a lot but uh, yeah. i do not get that uh, ple- that uh, anand response, from it because yeah. that joy <laughs> from it yeah, yeah. because uh, you know even if i change their uh, one thing is that their views are more rigid they are less open like you are like i felt that you were so open to mm-hmm. new ideas during this conversation yeah. another point is that even if they are open Uh, i do not get much hope by changing their ideas what <laughs> would be achieved but yeah. so so it was definitely a you know pleasure and if i may say that uh, you know you you also made my evening very nice by you know having <laughs> me and talking to me yeah, yeah. I, if anything i'm more grateful to you than like thank, thank you. you so much thank, thank you, you so much for making time for this thank you 